And we've been listening to presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden, as well as former presidential candidate Bernie Sanders, discussing the country's response to COVID-19 and what Democrats would do different when it comes to the economy. Senator Sanders has endorsed Joe Biden for president. And here to join us and break this all down is CBS News political correspondent Ed O'Keefe. Hi, Ed. So this is a significant moment, Sanders endorsing Biden. It is, uh, you know, a few things to think about here. First of all, this is explicit. There's no, no wiggle room, no doubt, no gray area now. Bernie Sanders supports Joe Biden's bid for the presidency. He has said it on camera alongside his friend. They probably would have done this in person, just as Hillary Clinton did for Barack Obama and Sanders did reluctantly for Hillary Clinton in 2016. Uh, but from Burlington to Wilmington, Delaware, as somebody on Twitter just called it the most anticipated crossover event of 2020 has now occurred. And uh, it will uh, remain to be seen whether all of Sanders' supporters now come on board. We don't expect them to, but certainly larger percentages of them than did four years ago Sanders supporters for Clinton. Interesting there, a few things that they talked about at the top. Some of Biden's economic views and how they jive with what Sanders has been pushing for. And then you saw there at the end the education discussion about bringing down the cost of college for lower income, middle income Americans. That's something that Biden has embraced as kind of a happy medium or compromise between what Sanders was proposing and what Biden may have backed in the past. Uh, but this is clearly designed to show the Democratic Party, uh, to show President Trump, uh, to show anyone who may be skeptical about whether or not these two can actually unite, that they can, and that they have maintained and will maintain a professional and personal relationship, one of mutual respect, and one that never got nasty at all during the campaign. There's a real value in that, as we can see here. The payoff is that Sanders is now completely, wholeheartedly endorsing the former vice president. One of... Um, Sanders' former uh, aide just texted me back, you know, reminding us that this, this was a commitment that Sanders had made, that he would be with the nominee no matter who that was. In this case, it's Biden, somebody he likes personally, and uh, so perhaps that makes it easier. Uh, but, but this is a, a big moment. We were told, we were tipped off to this by the Biden campaign a few hours ago, saying we can't really tell you what this is about, but you're going to want to be watching. Thankfully, we all were. We're ready for it. Uh, but again, this provides Biden a much needed boost and likely comes now ahead of an even more anticipated, if inevitable, uh, endorsement. And that is from former President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama. They are also expected to do something similar to this in the coming days, whether it's virtual, whether it's on their own. We'll wait and see. Uh, but Biden enjoys an advantage here. He has clinched the nomination, essentially, not officially, but, you know, inevitably now. Uh, because there are still 26 primaries to be held. But he has clinched the nomination earlier than any other non-incumbent nominee in recent history, doing it in April as opposed to doing it in May or June. So with Sanders dropping out, it's all but official. Uh, and Biden now gets to spend the next almost 200 days getting the Democratic Party behind him. Much more of a runway than Hillary Clinton enjoyed, and a runway that will be different, of course, given the times that we're in and the obvious restrictions that come with the coronavirus and uh, the traditions of normal presidential campaigning. Right. Uh, obviously, Ed, the coronavirus puts new things uh, into perspective. But one of those, you know, topics which are always important to voters, health care, seems to dovetail with the coronavirus. We did hear, you know, Senator Sanders say to Joe Biden, we don't obviously have the exact same views on on health care, but there was no animosity there. There was no there was no challenging when he said it. It was more like, let's hear let's hear what you have to say on it. A, an opening for his supporters to accept, you know, Joe Biden's health care platform. Yeah, look, uh, Biden was never going to embrace Medicare for all uh, or the idea of universal health care the way Sanders and his supporters wanted it. But uh, some of the modest uh, tweaks to his proposals that he made yesterday or last week, uh, saying now that Medicare eligibility could begin at the age of 60, Sanders would want it lower than that. Uh, but that opens up the government-run system to a few million more. Uh, obviously not enough, necessarily, if you're somebody who believes in universal health care. But a tip of the hat, an acknowledgment that perhaps moving in that direction uh, is the right thing to do both politically and because there is interest in it. There have been some who support Sanders that believe that this entire crisis could actually boost support 
for a more robust government-run system. But even in the beginning weeks of this, Biden was quite emphatic that there's no reason to believe Medicare for all or a government-run health care system would have helped stop this from happening or would have provided better care. He says, if you look at some of these European countries, for example, that run their health care systems entirely, it's not like they've performed any better. So, you know, that's up for debate. Uh, and for now, at least, it looks as if perhaps uh, that, that argument is somewhat sidelined. Uh, but look, Sanders got him there to, to make very clear that he supports minimum wage increases to $15 an hour at the federal level, uh, supports changes in how exactly college would be paid for, especially for lower income Americans, and has gotten him closer to the idea of universal health care, if not actual full bloated support for it. So we'll see. Because remember, Biden made the argument, as did some other moderates in this race throughout the past year. You can believe these things, but there's also the need to actually implement them. And there's not enough support among Democrats, let alone Republicans in Congress, for what Sanders is pushing for, Biden said. So we've got to find some other kind of alternative or compromise. In his view, at least for now, that's the compromise. Lower the Medicare eligibility rates and see where it goes. We'll see. Uh, you know, but uh, the, the mere fact that these two are appearing together, much like you and I are on a split screen today, uh, is something that both camps will exploit, try to make sure their supporters see and make it clear that the Democratic Party now is fully behind Biden's efforts to defeat President Trump, which, of course, remains topic and concern number one for Democrats across the country. Mm -hmm. All right. The party is starting to come together and unite behind Joe Biden. All right. Well, Ed O'Keefe, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it.